Coming up on Here's a Thought with the Max. Learning now that it's okay to be vulnerable with this man. Um, having someone who wants to be with me every single time. Sometimes I sit and I'm like, this guy actually just wants to just be with me. If I could tell you, I recently just learned, let her be. Mm-hmm. She belongs to God, right? He'll deal with her. But the last two years were the hardest years of my life. Not just our marriage, but my whole life. I can't take credit forever for us sitting here. No. It was only God to keep us here. Yeah. Right? Don't call and, me. And, <laughs> <laughs> Dream Team, welcome back to our podcast. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, beautiful people? Dream Team, welcome to another exciting installment of Here's a Thought with the Max. My name is Lerato Macheta. And I am Petola Macheta. Yeah, so did I tell you how stunning you look today? Oh Thank my you, gosh, stop Thank it. You. I like it. <laughs> guys, can I let you guys? Can I let you guys? Can I let you guys? But we also have people who are choice in the house, yes. guys. I'm so excited about this next couple. Mm. Um, I really love their dynamic. Yeah. Ne? Because the gents are very colorful, ne? you understand? And, and the ladies are very poised and graceful and, you know, so I really want to get into the, this dynam- dynamic. Two part <laughs> 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 No! no. Recently, no. example. No. So guys, in the <laughs> house, she dancing with two we have, like <laughs> we have the beautiful Cabello Mohale and Morale Mohale. Come on, make some noise, somebody. <laughs> We have, Welcome, Micah's, we have Micah's parents in the house. Yes. Yeah. My goodness. Do oh I tell my you, goodness. Do I tell you how, how stunning you guys you are? Guys my look goodness. Amazing. Thank you. And then that's how they Aish, wait a minute. Yeah. You're seeing yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Thank it's just, you. I can see you guys in high school. <laughs> oh, just oh like, in high school was different. Hey. What? No, no, we, we are still good looking. But, you know what I mean? But <laughs> what? You put glory to glory. glory. To glory. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Was yeah. 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 And I was not this one. Old things have passed away. <laughs> yes. 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 Behold, yes. I will yeah. do yeah. a new. Come <laughs> oh, on. You guys look great. Thank you so much yes. for joining yeah. us. Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. So, guys, so I'm really interested in. You've, you've done these interviews before, right? Where some of us know how you met. But for those who don't know, we just want to speak. Briefly about how you met. And like I said, I also want to tap into the dynamic of your personalities, right? Mm. Because even with us, people say, well, Lerato is strict. And I'm, I'm, I'm very like, I'm just like, dude, it's not that deep. She calls me (laughs) principal. Like, um, um, fundi, simuruta, I'm just like, yo, pasta make. Did did you, (laughs) did you see when you said, when they say you seriously went, (laughs) <laughs> so I really just want to talk about how you met and what attracted you to each other and just also explore the dynamic of your different personalities and how you guys make it work. Mm. You want to go for it? No problem. Uh, so we met in high school, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it's not obvious because not everyone knows. But we met in high school. Um, he was new um, and he was sitting on the, the grandstands. Yeah. And so I'm driving in with my dad, um, hostel. And so I see him and I'm just like to my friends, can I go? I've got a boyfriend. Oh my goodness. So I went now. The scandal. (laughs) Oh, Jada, I've done it. Entanglement. Entanglement. Then she'd have seen Tupac. (laughs) 
So I, I'm, I'm, glad, I'm driving in with my dad, um, and I'm I'm sitting in the back seat, and I'm just like to my friends, listen to what fresh she called meat, me. Fresh meat, like fresh meat. Oh like wow! Meat, right, so I, I won't real. forget. I, I look is... and I'm like, fresh Stop. meat. He's looking good. Stop. Even it, when my dad drops me off, I say bye, dad. Do everything, gives me money, whatever. I go upstairs, I drop my bags down, and then I'm like. Ibile, he's sitting next to my boyfriend's friend. So I can like go there and say, hey, and he's then introduce an myself. There's an, There's an excuse, right? Um, and, then I, I went, <laughs> and then I went down, introduced myself. And then, um, yeah, do you want to? I mean, look, I was already in a toxic relationship then. Okay. So when he got there and he was really, he was a good boy. I mean, I was sitting with him the one time and he's busy telling me about his girlfriend. And I'm sure. like, I'm sitting, Kimo. Like, mm. why are you telling me about your girlfriend? Can you not see me? You know. Okay. So I, I that attracted me to him, and because I was in a toxic relationship, he was like a, an escape for me. Yeah. yeah. Um, something that I desired for myself. Um, but yeah, we had a great friendship for like what a year, two years, before we started Some like dating. That. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know that he was sitting on the grandstands. Maybe you can tell that story. He was sitting on the grandstands when I yeah, arrived. Yeah, so when, when she, when she, when her dad drove in with her, I yeah. saw her in the car, and as she said, I was sitting next to the boyfriend's friend. Uh -huh. The boyfriend was actually just a meter or two for me. Yeah. So she drives past. I'm like, dang. <laughs> Who was that? First of all, <laughs> what just happened? What? <laughs> I didn't even see no yeah. one out the car. Okay. So I said, who's that? And then the friend of the boyfriend goes, bro, this guy's checking your girl out. Already I got enemies mm. at school, <laughs> you know? But it's funny because me and the boyfriend actually became good friends later on. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and then, yeah, that was, that was, I saw Fresh Me too. And then uh, as time went on, I think we actually got to hang out more. And then, yeah, yeah. let's not make excuses for being a player girl. Because you had a <laughs> you had a boyfriend and you I'm mad gay. Look, I was you mad that I'm talking about my girlfriend. <laughs> so, so I mean, so hold on, hold don't on. Don't judge a book by its yeah. cover. You know what I'm saying? I'm all out here, but <laughs> she's being out here. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right. Uh, so at the time that you guys now eventually want to get it together, what happens? Who actually then breaks that? kind of thing to say, hey, you've got a boyfriend, I've got a... Who pursues who yeah. and how does that happen? No, man, the, the story is very long in, the, in between, yeah. but okay. eventually I was no longer with my with the guy yeah. that I was cool. with and he was also single. He okay. didn't even ask me out, by the way. He just told me, you're my girlfriend. My man. Yeah. You know what I'm like, saying? you got to claim yeah. what you got. Really? What's yours sure. is yours, yeah. you know? I mean, but why yeah. are you mad? Why are you mad? today? No, I'm not mad, but I mean, you know, he could I mean, have been yeah, I would but always advise you. Know, you know what's so funny? You yeah. know what's so funny, right? Yeah. We always speak about how people love to rope they want to have a perfect story of like of romance, right? Mm -hmm. Of how it started. Like my wife also has difficulties <laughs> yeah. when we speak about it. She's like, no, it didn't happen like that. It didn't really. And I'm like, no, but yeah, it, it just happened like yeah. that. And no, so you that. guys are, are dating yeah. um, and in between dating just because we did our research. But baby, before the research, <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, interested yeah. in the dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. they drove in, Mahalo was throwing peace signs. Yeah. And you know, he was he's no, out here, he, yeah, you know. And Kabela is side. very I look at Kabela and you strike me as someone who's got a very quiet strain. Yeah. You know, you're very mm. poised, you're very elegant, <laughs> you're very great graceful, you know. Yeah, <laughs> What's that? So I just wanna find out how the dynamic works. Like is it a case of like opposites attracting or do you sometimes find that there are difficulties that you have with each other's personalities or do you just make it work? It's or it's just seamless. No, it's not there seamless. No such thing as seamless. Okay. Anyway. It's not okay. seamless. Yeah. Um, but I think it's only now where we are learning to embrace each other's mm. differences. differences. Yeah. At first, we tried so hard to change one another. Wow. I didn't understand why you not like me. I mean, there are times where... Why am I not a man of God? Like... In we, a suit. Ah, sure. Come on, that's not... We talk right. like... <laughs> hey, my but beloved wife. I struggled. You know what? Like, sometimes yeah. we would go to church... And Mukhale would rock up in shorts, like, um, King Dikao Sudili, more. You know, like, he would be very funky. He pop a dog. He pop a dog. dog. And I just did not understand that. But also, it was because of my immaturity in the Lord oh. as well, right? Thinking that you had to dress a certain way. Mm. And also the people pleasing, um, 
thing that I really struggled with. So I thought he has to dress a, a certain type of way. Um, it was more exterior, not mm. the heart. Um, so I struggled with that. And that's just like small examples. Yeah. But like now, I think we are learning to settle um, and enjoy one another's uh, differences and yeah. actually yeah. draw strength from each other's differences. And I, and I think meeting from high school already, like, we we in high school. Yeah. yeah. I barely know who I am. Yeah. She barely knows who she is. Sure. The guy I was then is not who I am today. Completely. And also now, bearing in mind that you're growing together, mm-hmm. right? And I mean, at that time, my only option or my only desire was to please her. Right. Sure. So whoever I was becoming was whatever she wanted. Oh. And then as the years go by, now I realize I'm tired of being what you want. Oh. I'm trying to figure out me mm. and who sure. God says I am. And I'm trying to unveil and find out who is this guy. And now I'm in a position in my life where it's like, I love this guy. Mm. Right. And I know this guy. And I do know that tomorrow this guy is not today's guy. So I'm uh, learning to also apply that to her to say she's not that little girl mm. who used to arch her back and walk all over that school so mm. that boys can see her. And now she, she, she's a woman who walks in integrity and, and sure. carries herself in a different way and tomorrow she's not who she is right now. Mm. Sure. So, yeah. It's, and that's it's, making it's, room for us to evolve yeah. Yeah. in the marriage yeah. and be okay with learning the version of ourselves that yeah. we've evolved in within sure. the context of because we've been together for so long. <laughs> and, yeah. and I've learned that we change more than we actually are aware that we do. Mm. The person I am when I walked in here is not the person I am right now because of my interactions and exposures to different peoples and different personalities and different uh, knowledge, information. So mm. now I could, I'm so different from a minute ago. Sure. And so when we learn that and realizing that also I can't change her. Mm. You don't want to change her. I don't want to change her. But when you're growing up so close together and throughout your 20s you're growing, all you're thinking about is why is she not doing that? Mm. Mm. And if I could tell you, I recently just learned, let her be. Mm. She belongs to God, right? Mm. He'll deal with her. Sure. Mm. Wow. Well, that's all we have for today. <laughs> that was another riveting story. Yeah, that was great. No, I'm, I'm so, interested wow. to know. Uh, thank you for that. Gosh, wow. Yeah. This, I mean, this went there much sooner than yeah. I thought. So you already know what the phone um, call, though. Let me, let me. Okay, let me ask you a question. Yeah. What is it that leads you back to each other? Mm. Ooh. So, high school. Yeah. You're dating. You're not dating. Yeah. You're dating. Yeah. You're not up, dating. Up. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you guys get married. You fall out. You whatever. What leads you back to each other? Yeah. Hmm. I think for me, uh, my answer, Gabelo then and Gabelo now is different. Mm-hmm. At first, what led me back to him all the time was because he was the only thing I knew oh. then yeah. sure. that was safe for me, apart from family. Mm. So I got so used to being with Mukhale that I just could not see myself with someone else. So I got used to him yeah. in, in, to some extent in an unhealthy way. Yeah. Sure. Um, but now I've grown and I cannot lie to you. Um, it's so simple. I know maybe there's a I don't know, a bigger answer people are expecting. Yours is right. But for me, it's when I went into the marriage with Mokhale, I needed confirmation from the Lord that Mm. this is the man I can be with. And for it was very important knowing um, knowing the purpose that God has on my life. I had to know, is this the man you want me to be with? I couldn't just guess it uh, for me personally. And so what keeps me going back to Mohale is the yes I got from God. Mm. And I think that's why it's so important. Yes, it's not going to be the same. If you can hear, you know, confirmation from the Lord, please do that because it keeps you. That mm. yes from the Lord, when yeah. you're going through hard times, um, yeah. we might not go too deep into it. I, I don't know how the Lord will mm. lead the conversation. Say. But the mm. last two years were the hardest years of my life, not just mm. our marriage, but my whole life. Mm. And it is because of the marriage, mm. right? Mm. Had I not heard that yes from the Lord, I promise I was out. This would like, be here. This would not be here. Mm. Um, I was actually thanking this lady that I know. I trust her. I trust, you know, the gift of God on her life. Um, 
Like I was, there's a day where I said to the Lord, God, I am out. Hmm. And I got that word. She sent me a prophetic word, detail, detail, detail. I knew this was from the Lord. Hmm. And that's what helped me stay. Like, so it's, hmm. it's just confirming words from the Lord that yes, that I got from God um, when we were still in Cape Town. And I kept asking, Lord, give me confirmation. Give me, yeah. I asked for confirmation, guys. Sure. It yeah. wasn't just once. Every Lord, yeah. Yeah. like I need it, you know. And so that yes, that. That peace, that confirmation I got from Holy Spirit, that's what keeps me going back. Um, Even when sometimes I don't see what I want to see in that present moment in him, I trust that if my dad says, I can marry this man, surely there's something Mm. about Mm. him that he would trust him or trust to position him as my husband in my life, right? So, yeah, I think that's... That's the truth for me. Back then, it was just because Mukhal is all I knew. I mean, I've been with mm. him for so long. He was my comfort place or my a sense of security. He was Safe home. Space, yeah. he, was he was home. home. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, as time went on, it's that yes from God for me. Yeah. And for you, Mukhal? Yeah, I think um, really for me, um, throughout the years, I had no idea. <laughs> the honest truth about it. And I remember I said to her, I really do not know how we still together, mm. right? And I could only say it was God. Mm. And, and and throughout the years, I, I was learning principles. Mm. And, and I remember learning a, a, a very tough principle in today's age, which was the principle of staying. She was my girlfriend, had no reason to stay, right? But for some reason, my heart was always gravitating to her and I can't tell you how or why. Mm. And I can't say it was love. Mm. Mm. Because it's like you know, she was still hurtful when I loved her, so that mm. couldn't keep me to her. But then, for yeah. some reason, my heart continued to remove the bitterness, the anger, the on it. Like I can't say on its own, but I really do believe that Holy mm. Spirit was working through my mm. heart and keeping me and gravitating to her. And I say that was the principle of staying that I learned to say that you gotta get to a point where you don't just leave every time it gets hard. Mm. Oh. And I was dating her. Mm. And majority of the people that I spoke to about the principle of staying, they say, bro, you're not married. You don't need to be doing that. And I would say, well, I really feel like I should stay. Hmm. Why? I don't know, but I do know I need to stay. Cool. Sure. Right? And, and sometimes not knowing was enough for me. But knowing internally that I should be here. I'm with you. Was mm. enough. Right? And, and I said that to her. That I said, it, it, I can't take credit forever for us sitting here. Mm. It was only God to keep us here. Yeah. Right? And sure. Yeah. And and today I say I am here because of my covenant. Mm. Sure. Because I, I am a man who, who understands the power of your word mm. Mm. and the integrity of your word. So as a man, you've got to keep your word and have the integrity of your if your word is ever gonna mean anything, Jesus' mm. word means everything because he kept the integrity. Yeah. So today, the covenant I took, you know, we talk about it, bro, mm. the dying of the altar. Mm. Yeah. You know, we, we celebrate marriage so much that we forget that when you get onto that altar, it's actually altars are made for dying. Oh. For sure. Yeah, so, sure. So it gets hard. Like she said, the past two years were crazy, right? Mm. But I got bros <clears throat> that come at different moments. Like you came at a different mm. moment. You say, bro, you got to take the position and die. Mm-hmm. Mm. Right. And I did say that. that you said that? Yeah. I did. I did. I said that. Yeah. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> and and so, before yeah. him, yeah. there was there was there was scriptures, these people that you'd listen to just going past and they would remember remind you of the truth of the scriptures and so, you realize, mm-hmm. oh, it's a covenant is not just uh something you watch over. She's not my girlfriend anymore. Mm-hmm. Back then when I learned the principle of staying, I could have just left. Why? Because I had no covenant with you. Sure. I didn't say to God, I'm taking her as my wife and mm. she can have me as her mm. husband. I didn't say that. There was no commitment, mm. you know? Mm. So now that there is, oh, I'd rather die daily. And I said this to her the other day. I said, I'd rather die and be with you mm. than to die outside of our covenant. Wow. And, and, and that death is more painful. Sure. Yes. So, yes. you know, I, I don't want to make this about us, right? Make it but, about us. <laughs> yeah. But what Carmelo said, um, well, well, I'll touch on what you both said mm. individually. So yeah. when Carmelo spoke about confirmation, I resonate with that because I knew 
God, I, I, I heard from God that this was my husband. Yeah. And that's also one of the things when it got hard kept yeah. me. Keeps you. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Where I'm like, yo, Lord, this man that you gave me, yo, hi, 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 hi. So, 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 so it's amazing. Also because I said but, so. But, 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 it's also, no, but it's also amazing. I love to hear yeah. you. Like the conversations that you're having with Mahal, it speaks to yeah. our growth. Yeah. Because back then, you weren't trying to die. <laughs> You were trying yeah. to be right. Oh, okay. <laughs> you were trying to be right, yeah, yeah. right? So I absolutely love that. And yeah. and also, Mohale, what you're saying about, I, I want to touch on something. When you speak about forgiveness, what does it look like? You know, because we, as as married couple, we, mm. as we journey, we hurt each other on yeah. so many occasions mm. and we need to forgive one another. People think that hurting each other has to be this big thing where yeah. it has to be, infidelity or yeah. this or this but like on daily things you know the fact yeah. that you didn't consider me yeah. Yeah. i'm hurt you didn't keep yeah. your word you didn't keep your word yeah. right you, you said you'll come and you did it what so what does mm-hmm. it what does it look like because i know that forgiveness is mm-hmm. really one thing that a lot of people struggle with yeah i mean like like i said for me the really the foundation of my life is really the scriptures and looking sure. at jesus and seeing how he moves right and how he moved um i remember learning that to whom to whom much is given much is required for and, sure and and when i looked at the cross and i realized much of my, much forgiveness was given to me much grace was given to me that's how i even actually got to forgive my absent father yeah. because i had to now humanize him and say he's human and the same amount of grace i deserve or not even deserve that i long for daily so does he, right? And when Jesus taught me that and said he's human, made mistakes just like you make mistakes every day and you expect me to forgive you and though I have forgiven you. So if you can't forgive him, how do you want me to continue pouring out my mercies and grace to you? Mm -hmm. Because something about the scriptures talks about how you judge, you shall be judged, right? Mm -hmm. So meaning how 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 I handle him is how he's gonna handle me. So mm. how I handle her is how I'm going to be handled. Sure. Mm. Right? And even worse for a man. <laughs> That's a word. Yo. Come on. <laughs> even yeah. worse for a man. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, for sure. Because, I mean, there's scriptures that say, if, as a man, if I handle her in such a bad way, uh, God won't even hear my prayers. Mm. Right? Meaning you're not handling what I've given you to steward well, well in such a way that will allow me to hear you. I don't want to hear you. He's basically mm. saying, I don't want to hear you. So... Forgiveness is something where I realize much of it has been given to me. Before I walked into this room today, I had so much forgiveness that God had to give to me. And I don't even know because sometimes we think it's the big things, Mm. right? And a lot of people think uh, this whole idea that vows only matter when it's infidelity. Sure. And it's like, no. Mm. Because a lot of people say you broke broke your vows when it's infidelity. Mm. And it's like, no, I also learned, and I said to her the other day, I say, I think, I think we've not kept our vows on a oh. daily basis. Mm. Not because there's a third party. No, we, we just, when you read the, 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 the vows, when you remember your vows and you remember how you said you will show up and when you will show up and how whatever it takes and how you, how you will, how you will handle, now. who you would put before her. To no love one. and to mm. cherish. Yeah, yeah. she's to, first yeah. and nobody else. I forsake every single one. It's not I forsake girls that I'm messing around with. No, it's mm. I forsake mm. every mm. single wow. one and put you first. Mm. So mm. have I been living like that with her? Not really. I drop the ball daily. So I need forgiveness. Mm. So if I need it, doesn't she need it? Mm. And, I, and I, I think I'm learning that now, even as we speak, it's not, the, I mean, in the past two, two years, like she said, it was difficult. So now it sounds easy as I'm saying it, but I could tell you that even when I woke up this morning and when we went to bed last night, she says, I think we overcame that because we had a moment where it typically could have triggered us mm. and we would have went to default fight mode. Sure. But in that moment, I said what I wanted to say. And I had a slight voice internally saying, you've said what you've said. Shut up. Mm, wow. It's done. And I had to keep quiet. Because mm. I was whether she responded how I wanted, whether she was gentle with it. I was gentle though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is good. That, yeah. This is I, I was. <laughs> like, I tossed last night and I yeah. said both did. But it was like, God's also teaching me it don't matter how she responds. Mm. Oh. 
like you still got to be sinless. Mm, you still yeah. got to forsake sin. It doesn't mean that because she's given you, you think she's given you reason or she's been hurtful or she's been deceitful or she's been manipulative or she's been whatever you may think she's been. doesn't mean that it's okay for you to not be a douche. Mm. doesn't mean that you can be absent now. It's character. You know, I mean, so, yeah. yeah. I'm saying it's character. Even, even with the Lord, one thing I learned uh, recently is he doesn't... Um, give the things how he he is and who he is and how he behaves with us is not based it's not a response it's not based on what we do it's yeah. it's it's his character who it's he who is. he is. is and so if he's the one who we look to then we need to get to a place where um we don't res- i don't respond to mukhale because of what he does yeah. or i don't respond to mukhale in a certain way because of what he does yeah. it should be this is who i am therefore it doesn't matter what you do right. how yeah. i respond to you will be from a place of essence um character uh, yeah. this is who i am and this is who i choose to be i'm not going to uh, compromise who i am because of how you acting or yeah. how you're responding to me i'm going to keep at it it's not easy it's so, easier said than done uh, but that's yeah. that's where we need to get to hore this is who I am. Okay, oh, act funny today. Okay, it's getting to me, but I'm not going to allow myself to to go or go a bit lower than who I am just because mm. you're treating me a certain way. It's not a, it's not an easy thing. See, no, I don't even. So <laughs> <laughs> forget the notes. Forget the notes. <laughs> so, the script. <laughs> <laughs> the script. <What>? Yeah. <laughs> so um Given everything that you're saying, what do you know? What do you know to be true about yourself that was really difficult to swallow? Hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna let you go there. You gotta go first. <laughs> now you gotta go first. Why you, you think know, about it? So, no, no, so I know, why, but I want to hear what she so thinks of her. So while you're thinking about it, let me yeah. just try to try to unpack it a little bit. So hmm. here you are in a place where you're saying, you know what? At the end of the day, um, me loving my wife is a commandment and it's not circumstantial, mm-hmm. right? It's not based on how respected I feel. It's not based on how honored I feel. It's, yeah. it's not circumstantial. Mm. It's a commandment. Love your wives as Christ loved the church. And we've spoken about this, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have to make a conscious decision to die Every to time. self yeah. every single day. I need to lay down my life yeah. for my wife. Yeah. But there are those things... Yeah. That I've just learned about myself that I have to lay down and I'm like, mm. oh, yeah. Mm. What are those things that you know about yourself that's difficult to lay at the altar and be like, ah. Oh. Mm. Uh, I, I just give it a little hint and then she gotta go, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the one thing I've learned is that I've developed a bad mouth. Mm. Mm. A terrible mouth. Because mm. right? you're smart. Uh, besides you, being smart, you, oh, I could you, talk you, you slick. Now you you slick with it. Oh, <laughs> but here's what I learned where I developed it. In the past two years, going back and forth with each other, me trying to prove my masculinity now. To say, mm. Yo, and to a point where I've never led the household and I don't lead from a point of proving masculinity. Because mm. I'm not trying to dominate her. Mm. I'm trying to have us dominate. So I, I need her to move with me and not move under me like she's lower. Mm. she's beside me Mm. so in the past two years of being hurt so many times and continuously saying something and not being hurt and i know a lot of men don't feel heard right Mm. Mm. i developed a bad mouth i said all right cool you gonna treat me like that i'm gonna talk you down like this because Mm. i knew she valued words Mm. and you value words right I value Mm. behavior and actions you Mm. tell me you love me and you act contradictory from loving me your words don't carry weight, mm. right? Sure. But you care when I talk a certain way, right? I I show you. Mm. So I developed a bad mouth to a point where I remember I was in traffic driving, and I had a bad mouth in traffic <laughs> with other drivers, mm. and something said you're gonna die with your mouth. Sure. Because I knew that I could talk so gangster, and I remember God saying, "You talk so gangster." I wonder what's going to happen if you re- meet a real gangster, right? You're not a gangster. Mm. 
You like hip hop. Oh, hip hop, a dog. That doesn't make you a gangster. You're not gangster. You yeah. will die, right? Because yeah. I could smack talk. I yeah. Can, who you, you think quit. who is with your yeah. yellow looking shirt looking yeah. like a mess that see that fell yeah. off the ground? I can't go no see. Yeah. I could shoot. Yeah. And he said, you're going to find somebody who's going to really shoot you. So. Yeah. And then now I realize, oh, I watched the I watched the podcast between T D Jakes and, and his wife and we're talking about why would I use the very words I praise God with to tear down somebody oh. I say I love. Right? And, and and I may feel like I have the right to, but it doesn't help because now I'm now I'm rebuilding all that I've torn down. Mm. As we speak, mm-hmm. that you tore down, that I tore you down. gotta rebuild it. Mm. Yeah, so I now I, I have to rebuild it, and now I also have to learn to be patient when I say, "Baby, I love you, I adore you, I need you. You are my God-given wife," and she's just like, mm. "Now I have to be patient." So... Why? Because the healing process, yeah, is not going to happen just because I had a revelation of my bad mouth. Yeah. Mm. Because mm. the trust issue comes yeah. in yeah. because now she can't trust your words. Yeah, yeah. now it's like, right? you use the same yes. word. Now I'm sitting in the house, I'm doing hallelujah and I'm praising mm. God yeah. and you're a hypocrite. And she's sitting in the room, she's yeah. saying, that dirty mouth is giving yeah. God praise. <laughs> Look at her face right now. That dirty she, mouth. She literally moved right back into that room and she was like, that dirty <laughs> mouth. Sure. Yeah. Right? Because it's happened before. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, Lord. Yeah. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. That same mouth? Yeah. Huh? So that's that's one thing cool. I've learned mm. that I've developed is a bad Thank mouth. you for sharing that. Wow. Though. That's, yeah, yeah, thanks, that's dope. Yeah. 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 I think for me, it um, withholding and passive, being passive aggressive. So mm. sometimes we look at someone who, like, for example, let's say Mukhale, he can come off as aggressive because mm. he speaks and he's. we need to sort things out now. Whereas I'm more silent. But just being silent doesn't mean, <laughs> doesn't mean I'm the better one because mm. I can be silent with attitude and I so. can be sitting and I'm gonna, in my head I'm like, oh, that's what you're deciding to do. Oh. I will not do A, B, and C, you know, but that doesn't make it any better. Silent mm. aggression. Yeah, so it's being passive aggressive um, and and withholding and withholding, yeah, mm. and and that's like withholding love. If I feel like you know you've done something wrong and you deserve A, B, and C, that mm. doesn't make it mm. right, right? Or I'm not gonna give you this. Um, yeah, you know, I'm gonna. Withhold. She ain't gonna give me that game, that dance, <laughs> that, dance. <laughs> that dance. And I'm trying to find a dance move, but she don't want to give me no dance. Um, so, she doesn't want to teach me. <laughs> yeah, she don't want to teach me how to dance. Yeah. And, and, and then also um, <laughs> learning. So this is how I am. I am a visionary. If I want something, I want to go get it. Like yeah. I will, you know. Um, but sometimes when when you are that type of person outside of marriage, great. But when you get into marriage, you kind of need to understand the principles of God, the yeah. order of God, the order of marriage. Yeah. And so it's been a real struggle having an idea, seeing it in my head and saying I'm going with it mm. and then just going with it without understanding, hey, this man is put here to be my covering. Yeah. You know, but in my mm-hmm. head, Lord, he hasn't been acting like it. So why don't you mm. I know it's fine, I'll go do what I have to do. You know, and that's not the right attitude yeah. to have. So um, I'm learning, I'm really learning to see him as the man God um, has positioned him in my life to be. Um, I'm learning to, even when he's not behaving like it, treat him like the king he is. Mm. Um, treat him like, you know, the, the, the man God sees him to be. Um, mm. And opening up my heart. It's, it's, we went to a Cape Town trip recently and it, the last day was just a miracle in and mm. of itself. Like we went to therapy um, and he, how we even got there. Yeah, that's God. Mm. And when we sat there with that therapist, like... I can't even I can't even explain it, right? The one mm. he told me as it is, like in my face, this is what it is that you're dealing with. And the thing is you're gonna have to give it to God. Like mm. you, you 
Matter of fact, he said, you're going to have to repent. You have to mm. repent from it. Because mm. yes, you're feeling it. And, mm. you know, it, it's we're not invalidating what you're feeling. Mm. So. And God will meet you where you are. But because you're Christian, you need to get to a place where you repent of it. Yeah. So. You know, you're withholding. You've hardened your heart. I did not want to hear those words. Mm. Um, to some extent, you have not trusted. You don't trust that God is God enough and powerful enough to soften your heart and to deal with your I was mm. I hated hearing those words, but when we left there, we were like, "That was mm. needed." Jesus, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Mm. like we, yeah. we had an amazing time in Cape Town, but that Monday, mm. I I feel like it changed the trajectory of our lives. Like, so, mm. like literally. Like, wow. like I said to you, I said we went to Cape Town because we knew we needed to reconnect, mm. and the whole entire week we were reconnecting. From our, our own, own strength. strength oh. right? So we were like, okay, let's get up, let's shower, let's go ride a bicycle, let's go get some ice cream, let's go do all these things. That no, we saw on Instagram. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, we were still dealing but with But we were dealing with yeah. things. There was yeah. days in those days where it was like, yeah, you 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 boring, dog. Mm, like, like actually. You know, there was days where she actually walked out the, the Airbnb and I was like, all right, sure, cool, walk guys. out, dog. Mm, right? And, sure, and then man. and then I and she's to, like, You're not gonna come after me? Yeah, no, no, but, <laughs> but, 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 but <laughs> even think I was fine sitting in that corner yeah. alone saying, oh, so. oh, back to this guy. Who does he think he is? Yeah. Okay, sure. Mm. And then, you and know? then and I still had to take my role and fetch her and mm. say, listen, we don't need to talk. Mm. But you got to go inside because you got to stay safe. We don't yeah. need to talk. Sit down there. I sit up here. It's cool. Right? And so the, those days like that. And you, of course, I'm not going to capture that and put you on Instagram and, yeah, so. and say, listen, she walked out. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's not what I'm doing the platform for, and so yeah. And then on and the then last Monday, day, that Monday was God. The literally, last day like, we had therapy, yeah. and then it, was, it felt like God was like. It Let feels me like you. it almost yeah. feels like it almost feels like God was like, "Are you done? Yeah. yeah. Let me, let me yeah. show y'all. Are y'all done? Yeah. yeah. So and because, it wasn't it wasn't just any normal therapy. It right? was like a it was a Christian therapist, and and when I say Christian therapist, is that this person is a studied therapist yeah. yeah but the therapy session is with scripture yeah. so if you got a problem with him Take it's it not him it, so, you got a problem with scripture. it to god so yeah. if you got a problem with scripture who wrote the yeah. scriptures yeah. that was the power of confession you know it says confess your sins one to another pray yeah. and you shall be healed sure. like that's exactly what happened it, we sat there we were confessing our sins to him yeah you mm. know a, a counselor uh, um and after that, he gave us scripture. But before we left, he prayed. And that prayer, like, I don't even, it's not elaborate, but it is powerful. It's almost as if we were sitting. And the thing is, it's in the hut, like, not even Wendy House. It's a Wendy House. Come on, so, That Wendy House so got we oil. We went into that Wendy House. We sat it's there. He oil. listened. And it's almost as if it was just me and Mokhali sitting with Holy Spirit. Wow. Mm. And yeah. we are there speaking truth. There's a point <clears throat> where he even said, don't be afraid. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what, so you, what how you, you think he's going to respond. Be honest. And there's honesty. Asking important questions. What is it about him that he's doing that makes you feel unsafe? Mm -hmm. Like, and you're sitting there in your head. You're like, am I honest? Am I? Yeah. back high and then But none of that happened. We were able to be honest with him. Wow. And then after that, he heard us. He didn't choose sides. He didn't make anyone feel judged. There was no judgment. So. There was an embrace, but there was correction. And then after that, there was a prayer. When we walked out, we literally looked at each other and were like, what was that? Wow. God did his thing. What and that man will whip a Bible out and start reading the scriptures and tell you, you, you did, your, did yourself right. Yeah. 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 You repent. So, you know, how long have you guys been married for? It's only going to three years. But in December. Been, so it's three years, right? Yeah. Congratulations, by the Congratulations. way. Congratulations. Yeah. But I want to say, it's not, I mean, it's only three years. Yeah, it's three, three years. years. It's, it's, three years. Just, it's because yeah. it feels like we're only starting our marriage. Yeah. yeah. Trust me, we but know, you, know what that means. But you know what I want to say, though? Yeah. I mean, it might sound weird because we've been speaking about how challenging the you know, the past two years have been, right? Mm. But it's because obviously you guys are growing and growth is messy. Yeah. yeah. It's uncomfortable. It, can be, yeah. it yeah, is. Yeah. You know, but I think you guys are so blessed to have this revelation now. I mean, 100%. we've been married now for 13 years, yeah. right? But I think sure. we had these light bulb moments. Yeah. Come on, my year five. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like we, yeah. like our start was bumpy. Yeah, yeah. And it was bumpy for yes. <laughs> a very long time, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and also the dynamic of, you know, having gotten married young. Yeah. And we, we were just 
what you guys are saying now yeah. we were not there yeah. year three well 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 what you're saying as far as the, the cause was there <laughs> yeah the solutions yeah. were not there yeah no the cause right? like yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. the issues were there the yeah, challenges sure, were there and sure. i remember one time saying to Narato because i mean we're christian we're you know sanctified yeah. black washed yes. by the blood of yeah. jesus on, somebody. i was like I think I was going to have these problems. Yes. Like these are these so are problems say, that we don't have as right. Christians. Christian. So my wife used to say, "I never thought <laughs> that I would, I would, I would have to deal with world yeah. problems." Yeah, I like know. these issues because yeah. I'm not about backwale. I can you know, know. nearly welds well. Welds well. Welds well. Here's the thing with that, right? Here's the <laughs> thing with here's the thing with that. I heard something the other day. I think I shared a little bit with him. I said I was listening to this guy. He spoke about many of us come. Um, up, well, we we show the the good side. You know, they say put your best foot forward. Yeah, that's the only foot many of us want to show, mm-hmm. and that's the foot that only Christians want to show. The righteous, I'm saved, I'm sanctified. Mm-hmm. No, you're not. Mm-hmm. It's a journey. And that's you still it. got your other foot. This is what this guy was saying. He said, you got to put your best foot, foot forward, but remember, you got another foot. Mm-hmm. And that may not be your best foot, but you still got to love that foot. Mm-hmm. You still got to take it to God. You still got to show those wounds. You still got to show that bad heart. You still got to show that. I, I tell all the time, I say, I know my strengths. I know my flaws. And I embrace all of them. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not afraid of them. You can't tell me, Morale, you, you do one, two, and three. And I'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm so scared. You no, know, I say, I know it. And so does God. Right? And the most important thing is that my heart posture is moving towards God. Am I right today? No. And I said, I want to be right. I just want to be available so that he can actually do what he has to do. So we walk around as Christians. And that's why there's probably such a high rate of divorces yeah. in Christianity. Because sure. all we're showing mm-hmm. is the Instagram snap. Yeah. And when I'm sitting with my bro, I can't say to him, bro, man, my wife. My wife it's tripping. Got, my wife got those things that make me do this thing. Mm. Right? And... and, and, and it's it's tough conversations that we like sometimes i don't want to talk to other men that are so solid in christ or that are so solid in you got to have a backbone as a man and be strong and stand for your household you take all the shots before she gets them you want to be you want to be an authority and be the covering you get hit first she got to feel less of the hit i don't want to have conversations with that people like that why but it, it's helpful because it sharpens me right so I'd be mad when I leave the house. When I come back, I spoke to Lerato. Mm-hmm. And now I can't keep my attitude up. Because mm-hmm. when I look at it, I'm like, damn, that's my crown of creation. Oh. Right? So my wife is sitting here going, yeah. baby, you, you said this. <laughs> he did. <laughs> <laughs> is it you? No, he phone calls up no, but, yeah. but, but I have told Lerato, like I always say to him, like, and, and oh, it's, it's really God. Like I, I always affirm him and say, babe, I love the man that you've become because yeah. hey, no swenya. Yeah. Hey, no swenya. <laughs> but <laughs> what what do you what do you love about marriage? Mm. Shadi, you got to tell uh, not, I'm always going first. You know? <laughs> because oh, it's women first. You know, and then you, um, you but you, you write on my answer. I don't write on my answer. <laughs> okay. Answers. Um, what do I love about marriage? Yeah. Shall I? You can go first. Let me just have a thing. You want to maybe give the level? I think it's really important to give people the right perspective. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What I love and really appreciate about you guys specifically today mm-hmm. is that you told the truth. Yeah. That you were vulnerable, you were honest, and you trusted us and the community out there to say, hey guys, mm-hmm. real talk. This is what it is, yeah. right? Yeah. But we don't ever want to walk away with leaving people yeah. mm. with yeah. an altered view of where we actually are. Yes. So it's important to speak about these things yeah. because they're not spoken about, yes. right? Yeah. But what we also want to do is talk about the beauty of it. The beauty yeah. of it. Oh, man. Yeah. That's, that's why I ask. Oh, what do you love about marriage? So y'all could go first now. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no, yeah. like, I'll let go, you go. go. go, go. I wouldn't be this guy. Sure. <laughs> 100%. I, I wouldn't be the man. 100%, bro. Sure. I, I, I wouldn't. 
you'd be a para. Ooh, yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, no, no but real talk. Yeah. I feel you, bro. Yeah. yeah. I feel you, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I say this, and I'm and I'm I'm gonna let you finish, but I always say, guys, mm. marriage is easily the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. You do marriage, and I say do intentionally, yeah. right? Because you have to actively participate yeah. it doesn't just happen to you you have to do marriage right yeah. but i wouldn't be half the man that i am yeah. today had yeah. it not been yeah. you you know and wow. they say when you when, when your problems are coming to comfort you but it's the problem <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah. oh but that chiseling that sharpening yeah. that you know yeah. always needing to go away and, uh, yeah, yeah but yeah go ahead. Mahal, i just want to say i see you getting emotional yeah. right I, and um I want to get into that. Like, what is it about this is triggering you? Oh, and, and yeah. I, I mean, recently... I sound like Oprah. No, nah, don't, <laughs> worry, about like, don't you know? worry about it. I think, I, I, think I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be this man. That also with what you're asking is that I wouldn't be this vulnerable and so masculine. Sure. Mm. Because I remember growing up, I've, I've been actually, I actually went through some bullying and all those things. So growing up, I remember being bullied and being pushed around there's a story i'll probably tell one day just not now but mm -hmm. and then and, and, and then i got to nsa in grade 10 and i think for the first few months they had this thing where they actually bullied the new kids or well, they beat down it was called a beat down and i remember on the seventh month of me being in high school in nsa i remember punching somebody so hard sure. right and realizing oh i'm actually able to dominate another man mm. right and also growing up i used to be pushed around so much and i would cry right or i'd run to my mom mm. and it was always told yeah you shouldn't cry you're 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 a man or, you know the the normal yeah, toxic yeah, yeah. stuff they mm. teach us guys yeah. or, and even 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 in family like i had people that that treated me a certain way that would say oh no you a snitch you always telling moms or you always doing this or no you cry a lot so I made a vow never to cry. Mm. Mm. So when I punched somebody for the first time and I enjoyed the dominance of dominating somebody and the anger that I, that I could exude over another person and see the fear in their eyes, it messed something that was already in here. Mm. Mm. So for the rest of my many other years till now, I actually learned how to fight. I learned how to actually be aggressive. I learned how to be angry. I learned how to tell another guy, if you mess with it, I'm gonna knock your head off your neck and they're gonna have to pick it up in the ditch. That's the language I had, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember in these past two years saying, Lord, I wish I could cry. Sure. Mm -hmm. Cause I never knew how to cry anymore. That's the vow mm -hmm. I made. I, like I, vow. I couldn't cry. Even when I knew, you, uh, the tears are the most re like relieving yeah like they're the most healing yeah, things yeah, yeah. in some situations yeah and yeah. i couldn't and i would I'd be like lord i could i know if i cried or go away and i couldn't hmm. and then for the past few months something was unlocked and it's not it's not i don't want people to think as a man you just need to cry at all times no that's not what i'm saying but i'm saying as a man these things that you need to be cried and moved by these situations where you should be able to express it in a form of tears. Mm. And for me, there's certain things that move me. And, and I'm so excited. Like this is, when this happens for me, you yeah. don't know how much of a miracle wow. it is because it's healing that anger. It's mm. healing sure. that idea that I need to dominate my brother. It's healing the idea that I need to walk around with my chest up to be a masculine man. No, that's toxic. I'm, I, 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 like I said, I, I tell men I love you, bro. Mm. Like I, I genuinely love you and I genuinely see you, right? That's the most masculine thing you could do as a man mm. because you're encouraging another man. And the thing is that as men, we hardly ever even get told we love. You're like, I love you, right? Mm. And, I, and I've learned masculinity can only breed masculinity. Mm. Femininity can never breed masculinity. Like, I was raised by women, amazing women, but they could never feed that masculine side of me that only a man could. So now that I could cry, I'm more in touch with my emotions. Mm -hmm. And I don't cry over everything, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But I do cry. Especially when I see another man. Mm -hmm. it's even, yeah. It's even more. Mm -hmm. I cry more over a man 
than I do of a woman, mm. right? Because I don't understand femininity to that level. Mm. But when I see another man go through something and I mm. could say, I wouldn't be this man. Mm. It's because I know what it took and I know what it does and I know who I am right now and I know the strength in who I am right now mm. and the strength lies in the vulnerability and like we we're saying the other day, honesty is the foundation of vulnerability and being honest enough to say, baby, I'm scared. Mm. I don't know how we're going to do that. God's going to have to come through and make a way. Or oh, baby, I don't know if I have the strength or the, the, the wisdom to raise this boy up in such a way that he'll be a healthy man and never needs therapy for the rest of his mm. life. Uh, and it's like those are those are strengths hmm. and i feel them right do i cry every day no if you cry every day as a man maybe you need to go and check it out mm-hmm. right and, and, and in a good way not in a not in a mm-hmm. demeaning mm-hmm. way yeah mm-hmm. you need to check it out and, and i said to her the other day i said i can't cry as much as you cry because these moments as a man where i need to stand sure. and pull my socks up and when you cry i gotta give you a shoulder to cry mm-hmm. right and then there's moments where I break down. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Because it's hard. Mm. Yeah. You know? And, and I think we would have less men going crazy and losing their minds if they knew how to cry. Yeah. Mm. So that's why. Sure. Wow. That's beautiful, bro. Woo! <laughs> what do you love about marriage? What do you love about marriage? Um, sure. I think... You know, having someone who I can be naked with and... and oh, that powder of yours is going off. <laughs> <laughs> um, having someone who I can be bare before. Someone, and this, this, is, this was very difficult, right? To be fully uh, vulnerable with Mukhale. That was one of the most difficult. In fact, just to be vulnerable as a person. I realized that I was an open person, very welcoming. But when I had to learn, Uguti, yo, you're not the most vulnerable person, that was very difficult. And so learning now that it's okay to be vulnerable with this man, um, having someone who wants to be with me every single time. Sometimes I sit and I'm like, this guy actually just wants to just be with me. Yeah, he likes really him. likes he me. Likes me. Oh, you're really- <laughs> he really likes me. Wow. Um, that is so honest because how many of us are, are willing to admit to ourselves, mm-hmm. right? Without feeling like a weakness, like yeah. I like being liked, mm. right? And sometimes, is it, okay, this is more of a question. Is it sometimes that it's a, it's, it's, it's a trauma that we have, right? that we're not willing to be vulnerable to that feeling completely. Mm-hmm. Like, so, no, I, I like being liked and you, you really like me and mm-hmm. this is good. It yeah. feels good, yeah. right? Yeah, I think uh, uh, that seeing Mukhale really, like want, Mukhale doesn't mind spending time with me every day, wow. like being around me all the time. Yeah. He never, so. like, Okay, right now, sometimes in a little bit, okay, so I'm going to space. No, but it's, it's never, it's <laughs> never. <laughs> but, 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 um, he doesn't mind being, <laughs> okay, he doesn't mind being around me. Yeah. Yeah. Being around me all the time. Sure. Um, but that triggered something in me. Because I, I just, I didn't understand, why does he want to be around me? Like, what is it about me? Like, mm. You know, cause, and that showed me that I never really believed that people could love me just oh, for wow. me. Right. So I, and, and, and I had to take that up with the Lord. Um, but yeah, just to bring it back, I love the fact that my marriage is allowing me to tap into parts of me um, I never knew existed. existed. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's it. almost similar to what you, you were saying about um, you would have never been... Um, yeah the person you are today if it wasn't for for marriage i'm learning things about myself um yes we've spoken about that but i'm learning beautiful things beautiful treasures that god had has deposited in me yeah. in my marriage that i wouldn't have known right why because being married brings all the ugly to the surface we get to deal with them and then once god deals with them or in the process of god dealing with them then he starts showing you but there's this about you that you didn't know maybe was hidden or because of some of the traumas or some of the things you went through you never believed it about yourself and now i want to show you i want you to know this treasure that i've i've hidden in you i want you to embrace it you know um yeah and we 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 don't have to shy away from from those things uh, because god deposited treasure 
within us. And so I think my marriage um, is one of the, the spaces where I'm getting to find beautiful treasures that God has deposited in me. Um, I'm getting to be sharpened because <laughs> we, we are being pruned. Yeah. I'm growing. Um, but I also am with someone who loves just loves being around me yeah. and likes me not all the time yeah. but actually yeah. likes me as an individual nah, do like, I, I mean i do like you you just get on my nerves <laughs> yeah. Yeah. sometimes and, yeah. I, and i mean I, so i just wanted to add on to that to say we we say this a lot to say marriage brings out all the the bad to the surface right but bringing it to the surface means there's there's something underneath it, right? Yeah. And 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 if you don't want to deal with the surf with the surface, you might forget that there's depth under the yeah. surface. So sometimes it's just that's why I say my strengths, my weaknesses, I embrace both. Mm. She brings out the ugly to the surface, but I still acknowledge that there's something beautiful underneath. Yeah, it's like a diamond. If it doesn't go through the fire, you never so, get to find yeah. out that it's a diamond. A lot, a lot of people just get stuck on the surface, yeah. and you protect the surface so much. And it's like, so well, I wanna yeah. before we 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 are wrapping up yeah, now. Yeah, we could have yeah. you have guys have to come back for part two because yeah. we uh, had a, like we had like a two. fifteen minute conversation now offline mm-hmm. about leadership. We have yeah. to have that conversation. Yeah. But before we wrap up, I wanna speak about um, you guys are parents to a beautiful baby boy, Micah. Uh, Micah. I think that's such a beautiful name. Yeah, um, mommy. yeah. Um, what I want to know is that so so, you know, kids bring such a beautiful dynamic to any relationship to marriage. So what I want to know is that what have you learned about yourselves? Um, through being parents to Micah and what have you learned about each other? Sure. Um, you start. <laughs> you know, one of the reasons, some of the, the one of the biggest vehicle which God allowed for a lot of things to come to the surface, I, oh, I'm yeah. sorry, oh, yeah. is the birth of our oh, son. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 so yeah. that, you know, um, but I sit and I'm like, I thank God for that boy. Because we sit and we're like, are oh, they such gifts? They, he was a gift, even though <laughs> it was a mess in the beginning. But his birth helped. Um, I, I want to articulate this well. Like our foundation was already cracked when we got married. Like it was cracked. The birth of our son brought everything to the surface. And now we're allowing for God to rebuild and to work on our foundation. Had it, I don't think we would have gotten here if it were not for our son. Wow. Maybe later, or maybe we would have not even, even been together. Yeah. I could say, but it took the birth of our son for a lot of the mess that was hidden so deeply within us to be exposed. Yeah. And then we're, we're where we're at now because of our son. But yeah, so 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 there's a lot that we are now learning. And it's, it's now, I mean, he's almost two and we're only learning those things now. One of the beautiful things I love... Um, Kamukhali is very present. He loves his son. He lo- Muale loves his son. Um, you, you, he's very affectionate with his son. So Muale will like rebuke his son and then after say, come here for a hug. Like it's that yeah. I'm showing you and I'm correcting you, but because I want you to still know that even in my correcting, I still love you. Come, let me embrace you. He puts Micah to bed every night. Um, and you can, I just sit and I love hearing that. I, I sit and I just hear them have a conversation. And then he's just praying over Micah. And then he's just speaking to my. Now Micah knows how to say Jesus because we're always just speaking about Jesus in the home. Um, and so I'm getting to see a vulnerable side to Mohale. Um, and I know it's not easy because he grew up without his dad. Mm. So what he's doing is taking a lot of strength and he's choosing to say, I didn't grow up with my dad, but I want to be present for you. And I'm going to give you my all and I'm going to love you. And I want to know, I want you to know that I love you. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I love that. Are you crying? I'm also crying. I'm just like, sorry guys. I love that about him. Um, ah. It's a funny thing. I, I don't know if I'm even answering your question, but it's it's a it's a funny thing right now. Micah, he's weaned off my breast, right? And I keep saying, when I know news, I know Butler, you're obsessed with me because of my boob. And now that you're not on my boob, yeah. he's obsessed with Mukhali. It's just sure. Papa this, Papa, 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 sure. Papa. Yeah. Um, and he feels safe with Mukhali, and that's why he's that way. So um, knowing that, you know, I I won't just have 
my children won't just have a father who's in the house, but a father who's present because there's a difference. There can be a dad in the house, but not present. Yeah. Yeah. But my children will have a dad in the house and a dad who's present and a dad who will speak life over his kids, um, a dad who will bring out some of the things that God has p- placed. I mean, how he wants to parent Micah, it's not about, oh, this is what you need to be. No, it's God. What is it? What have you placed in your son that you want us to steward? Yeah. For me to have a husband like that, like wow right um yeah so it's teaching me those things about him that i'm now really like loving i I told him the last time uh in the shower but um and i said in the dance (laughs) in the shower i said to him i "I really i mean i know it's only been a very short time but i'm i'm loving the man that i'm seeing you become Mm-hmm. And that's so genuine. Yeah. Um, it's I, I'm just really, really loving the man you're becoming. And it's in how you're learning to love me. But it's also in how you father, uh, Mike. I know it's not really the question. But that's the only way I can answer it right now. Yeah. Because we're discovering parts of ourselves now. Um, after the whole two years happened. It's, yeah, it's the, it's the diamond that was hidden. Yeah that now we're we're seeing and i'm just like wow i'm falling in love with this guy all over wow. again yeah you are yeah. you gotta teach me how to dance when we get home <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. right you say so, it with your chest i think i think i think um micah micha Tokiso mahali mm-hmm. um he's a brilliant guy man mm-hmm. like i said to him i said i'm not raising a boy i'm raising a man mm-hmm. And he's 18 months, but I talk to him like he's a grown man. He's a leader. Like, I I don't, I'm not talking to him like he's a little boy, Mm. right? Um, Because he's a little man. Um, And and, and actually, he's teaching me that he understands. Sometimes we talk to our kids like they don't get it. But I've seen this boy understand it. Mm. Like, he gets it. Why? Because it's in his DNA to be a man, a leader, gentle, vulnerable, honest, soft, loving, it's in him already. So, and I said, like, like I always say, the greatest authority is not the one that controls, but it guides. And that's all I want to do with his life, right? I mean, his authority, not because I'm like, hey, 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 hey. But I mean, the authority over his life that I could be able to guide him mm-hmm. to his actual true father, mm-hmm. right? And I'm just a steward. So, mm-hmm. and, and he's teaching me. And I said to her, I said, this boy ain't do nothing but poop, eat, <laughs> cry, you know, do all those things. But I got such a pure love for him. You love him. And he has done nothing mm. but exist. But exist. Yeah. And I said, I pray, God, you could keep this love this pure, even when he gets to my age. Mm. That at some point, I don't start looking at accolades and achievements and all those things and, and loving him according to that, but keep the love this pure. Because the love that I'm experiencing for him is just literally Small. the glimpse of what God really loves us like. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we believe we have to perform for God. And I'm like, my son ain't do nothing. He's done nothing. And I love him. And we will do any and everything right. for yeah. him. I, what I more mean, God? I, I could restore all that toxicity again to protect him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Real talk. Yeah. And, just say something. But, but, <laughs> sure. And he has done nothing but yeah. just exist. And all he's done is say, ba 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 all the time. Mm-hmm. And, and, and just have such a pure love that sometimes I rebuke and correct him and he still cries and says, ba 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 ba. You know what I'm beautiful saying? Beautiful yeah. picture. And it's a beautiful picture because yeah. I've been rebuked just recently by God. But he still wants still to run want to, to him. run to him. Yeah. Right? Because I know he's the safest place. Yeah. So what, what, Micah, what, 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 what have you learned about, about your wife? About my wife? Yeah. <sighs> through being, through parenthood. Parenthood. <laughs> through, through parenthood. Um, I could give you the romanticized side of it. Mm. Or I could give you a part where I'm healing and we're healing through. The romanticized part of it is that I can't do it without her. Right, and I do not want to have children with no other woman. Mm-hmm. Like I'm good here, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> um, that's that's 
it's not just romanticized, but that's true. I don't want to have any children with any other woman. I want to be with her, and I, and, I, and I love the fact that she's the mother of my child, and I wouldn't do it with anybody else. The healing process of it is that I'm learning to adore her again because there has been so much hurt, right? And so much overlooking of little efforts and, and, and those things that she does. Like I said to her the other day, I said, I had your coffee this morning. Oh my gosh, I actually realized I enjoyed your coffee so much. Hmm. And I'm like, I've been doing it the same way. She's been way. doing it for a while. Right? So. She's been doing it for a while. And I realized sometimes you miss uh, the most beautiful things and you, you, you don't appreciate the most beautiful things about your spouse because there's so much hurt that's covering it. Wow. The one thing I could tell you is that she is a brilliant mother, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 and I never had to assert or, or have to be like, nope, in this household, we raise kids like this <laughs> because she's just been aligned mm -hmm. and I've been aligned. Mm -hmm. So I let her be her mother. I let her, I let her be a, a mother. A mother. Yeah. Let her be a mother. I let her she be a mother. Be a because, yeah. And, I, and she lets me be a father because at the same time, I'm not a woman. For sure. Yeah. Right. For and, sure. I, and I don't know what she feels towards him. You know, I, I don't know how to express you couldn't possibly. femininity. And you don't know what he needs from, from her. her. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's why the only time that I always, I, I, I'd, I'd say, hey, baby, hold on, is when, if she taps into being your, your territory. Right. right. I get that. Yeah. Being I get a, that. Yeah, 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 tap yeah. into being a father, that's when I say, but you don't have the mm. sex that I The have. stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> So like strict with Mike and I'm like why do you have to but then he's like yeah. I promise yeah. I know why I'm doing that just trust me and I'm and I and it was not easy in the beginning yeah. like at times where yeah. I'd really be angry yeah. but then I had to learn number one I've got niece I've got seven nieces guys yeah. right so all I've known is just one the minute. feminine yeah. heart yeah. Just feminine. Yeah. that's it right yeah uh, I, this is my first <laughs> it's the first boy <laughs> that and and i i'm also asking holy spirit help me parent micah not yeah. from femininity but as the man he needs to be right yeah. but now i'm also having to allow mohale to say hey they uh, allow me as well and trust that i also get discernment from holy spirit in terms of how to father how to parent yeah. micah so when i'm being strict don't think it's because the last time I was saying we should be very mindful not to parent from our own traumas, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it, it was coming from a lack of understanding because yeah. he was not trying to yeah. parent from trauma. He was just saying, I'm a guy. There are certain things I, I see. I get guys. Yeah. I get guys. And, and as little as he is. And as little as he is, I can see if I don't nip this behavior in the butt right now, mm -hmm. it's going to cause a lot of trouble later on. Mm -hmm. So I'm learning to really just trust and be like, all right, cool, do your thing. Yeah, man. Sure. Yeah, we said, guys, we're going to come with part two because, wow. Yeah. I wanted to say something. Yeah, now. but no, we have to wrap it up. We have to wrap it up. Through the, through the, yeah. I can see the guys going. Yeah, yeah. Our team is saying it's time to nip it in the no, bud. No, they're right. They're yeah. right. Because there's because order. Been, there's order. Them. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much sure. for joining us. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I did, guys, thank, oh, first of oh, all, thank, thank you. Thank you. You guys are absolutely amazing. And thank you for allowing the Holy Spirit to lead this conversation yeah, because sure. it was Holy Spirit led. We had a brief, yeah. <laughs> we had questions, we, really we had, brief, we guys. threw the script yeah, yeah, yeah. out of the, the, yeah. the water. Yeah. 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 So this was definitely Holy Spirit led and, and we almost so didn't, didn't, well, I almost said, no, I don't think it's time because I just felt like it's a bit too fresh, but then I got that peace from the Holy Spirit. And I think it was coming from the fact that it was coming from fear. Like, sure. God, we just come out of something. What if we go back? And the Lord said, Who? no, that's not what's sure. going to happen. So go. I'm the Lord who keeps you. I'm the Lord who keeps you. You can trust my work, right? Don't ruin my witness. When I've healed sure. you, speak about my healing or else it's the same thing. You're ruining my witness. Oh, Jesus. Hey, we about to get preachy. <laughs> Let's preach. Baby, close it. Guys, close this. Yeah, I'm closing it. <laughs> Guys, if you haven't done so yet, please remember to like, subscribe, comment, share, turn on that notification bell to know every single time we upload a new installment. We love you. We, we love appreciate you. you. I love you. I love appreciate you. you. You are gorgeous Thank in you, my every angel. single way. Because, hey. Oh my gosh. Hey. Teacher, about teacher, my teacher, my teacher, my teacher, my teacher, my I love every, everything that's happening. <laughs> we are growing. Yeah. We are um, glowing. Shout yeah. out to Renault Bryanston. Come on. Shout out to. 
uh, Brookfield, Brookfield at Royal. At Royal. Yeah. Uh, shout out to you. And, and you, shout out to Function Studios. Shout out to Function Studios. Listen, yes. guys, you we have no such an amazing team you working no with us on this. We're family now. Yeah, that's it. They so are I'm absolutely amazing. Roba, you know, Roba adopt them. We've adopted them. We've adopted that's them. It. You know, because because we are older now. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Malou, Mele, Mama, yeah. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. You good? I'm good. All right. One time. Till real. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This is people. We out. Love Shut you. Up. Bye.
Done. 